All right, so this video is going to be uh, the results from uh, the clutch I showed in a video earlier this year from a Lily Batrix to a Slackline Level 3. Uh, and I really just wanted to go over offspring by offspring and kind of like show all the genetics at play because uh, they kind of did some really cool things. But for starters, uh, this is just a normal uh, Lily. Um, and why I say this is a Lily, what I look for in a Lily uh, is... Here's my pointer. I'm going to try and see if I can keep from uh, triggering them with the heat signature of my hand and maybe get a little bit more of a relaxed snake. But in Lily, we often see these chains linked up together in the side pattern. Um, and so that's often what I look for in just the, the, uh, the single gene Lily. And we can see again here, man, I'm shaky. This is on like a 18 inch hemostat. So any vibration I make is just super amplified. And the other thing I look for is really dark pigmentation, especially in this uh, front third. Um, but you can also see it here in these like big black patches. Now, don't get me wrong, you can look at pretty much any normal blood python and kind of like see what you want to see that looks kind of similar to this. Um, but still, this is uh, a pretty classic looking lily. Um, and so lily, I think, could potentially be a, a hyper red gene as well as like a little bit of a uh, pattern gene. Um, and the reason I say that is that I've never seen one that's not just, just awe-inspiringly red. So check this out. From uh, left to right here, we have a lily. Um, we have a slackline level one, probably lily. Uh, we have a slackline level two and a slackline level three. Uh, and so we'll kind of just walk through these. Um, where did I put my hook? This is a slackline uh, level one. And I also really think there's lily in this animal because the front third of it is just outstanding. This is such a cool animal. I really like its uh, tail fadedness. Like that's going to be really fun to watch. But um, again, this is classic slackline level one, where we can see the front. Uh, about half of the animal is, is kind of normalish patterned, but then about uh, you know halfway down, we start seeing these bands that start connecting these side stripes across. And it actually is kind of hard to make a banded blood python. Like blood pythons really like to have this dotted back pattern. Um, and that can be really hard to break. And so to see these bands here is, uh, I think a really promising direction to head in in terms of, of some potentially cool combos. So this is a level two. A level two has a more variegated stripe. You can see it's uh, pretty broken up. It's kind of uh, more heavily patterned. Um, yeah, now I'm gonna slide these guys over. All right, and so finally at the end here is our slackline level three. Um, and you can see it is a thicker stripe. It is pretty much unbroken. There's reduced side patterning. And so in my mind, it kind of makes logical sense that uh, if you add a banded snake to a variegated stripe, you would get a clean striped animal. Um, oh, I forgot to use my pointer. Uh, and the other thing that makes me kind of think that is that a level three can produce all of these phenotypes, including uh, quote unquote normal, uh, level one, level two, and level three. Now, what goes against that is other people have done pairings that kind of don't really represent what you'd expect to see otherwise from, from that kind of attribute. Uh, so who knows? And also that uh, in my limited pairings, it seems like you produce an awful lot of slackline level twos, a handful of level threes, handful of level ones, and a handful of normals. It really seems like that uh, level two seems to dominate out the phenotypes a lot of times. So I don't know if that's natural vari variability, uh, mm, who knows. Um, but it definitely seems easily reproducible and consistently reproduced. I want to try and isolate this level one away from any striped stuff and really kind of see the direction I can head that in because it's just such an outstanding animal. So this is all of these, uh, what I think are the slackline level ones in the clutch. And this is, uh, again, from the past pairing. I also just wanted to point out just how uh, freaking insanely patterned her head is. That was an attribute of mom, and uh, man, that, that just got like even more extreme in this particular offspring. So this is cool. This is a slackline one uh, matrix. And so you can kind of see in comparison the difference that uh, matrix makes in terms of pixelating out the pattern. This one also has a pink tongue. Um, but we still see the same connecting stripes about a halfway down connecting bands. We have one, two, three connecting bands, and this one actually has the same number, one, two, three, and a half, whatever. And then this is, I believe, a slackline level one Lily Batrix. And the reason I think it is a level one is because we have the same connecting of the pattern um, about, uh, what is that, about halfway down the body. And I'll kind of show a different Lily Batrix from a different clutch. 
um, from the same sire, and you can kind of get an impression of the difference between this and the other animals he's been producing. So um, this is a Lily Batrix from a different clutch, uh, but does not have any slackline genetics. And this is what, again, I thought think is the level one. And I'll kind of explain the differences. So what Lily tends to do is it tends to add like a border right here, like a red border that separates the side patterning from the back patterning. And uh, it starts about halfway down and goes a little bit more than halfway down and goes, tends to go all the way, almost unbroken. You can see this starting right here. This red is just completely unbroken. Now this animal has sections that are completely unbroken, but it is far, far further down on the animal. And this is way more uh, banded than uh, I can really describe this pattern as being. That, that's kind of what I think is the difference between these two animals. This being the, the slackline level one, and this one not, but uh, yeah. This is not from the slackline clutch, but uh, I just wanted to show off a sibling to, uh, to this uh, Lily Batrix right here, which is another Lily Batrix, and like just, 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 holy cow, look at how insane that is. Uh, anyway, back to the slackline clutch. All right, so check out some of these level two combos in the clutch. Now this is the just straight level two, probably Lily. Um, and then here we have uh, two different slackline level two matrixes. Matrix, ma matri, whatever. Clearly we can see this one here is a kind of tri-striped phenotype. Um, and that's why I say it's really a variegated stripe with the level two because like every once in a while you just get like a weird one like that and you just like, I, I, I don't know. Um, yeah, super neat, super weird. Um, I would again say most of the level twos look like this, but I, again, I kind of like just use level two as a catch-all for like anything that is like clearly not a level three, but like is just a weird striped blood python. What I see with Matrix is that um, in addition to their quote unquote pink tongue, you see that like every scale is one solid color. So we can see that these scales are almost solid yellow and these are pretty much solid black or solid brown red. Now we're going to go over to a non-matrix, and we can see that uh, the colors dividing here, you can even see like one scale will have like four, not four, uh, two or three different colors, where it'll be like each scale is like yellow and black and red, like it all occurs on the same scale, whereas on the matrix, it's, it's just, it's far more pixelated. Like again, look, each of these scales is like either black or white or red. Um, whereas on this animal, it's either black or white or red and all of the above and none of the above and any combination thereof. And um, it can really kind of do some neat things, like we can even see in this animal, um, just how exaggerated um, that tri-stripe look is because each pixel, e each scale is essentially like one color pixel, um, which can, can really kind of do some neat things in terms of busying up pattern. All right, so these are, uh, again, here's a level two for reference. Um, and these are uh, level two batiks, uh, both Lily as well. You can see again, Lily does a really good job of separating out that side pattern as well as, which is really being compounded by the stripe genetics of what I believe are the level twos. The reason I don't think these are level threes is kind of because of a later animal that I'm about to show next. Um, but just kind of looking at these, we can, we can really see that uh, there's kind of a variation in how uh, intensely the striping is affecting them. Like this one has a little bit more clustering of pattern here than this one, which is a little bit cleaner, so you know, that's just where we see kind of that variance uh, combined with batik is, is really kind of neat to see. Um, it really does kind of busy up this side pattern too and it just it just kind of gives an orderly pattern to uh, the stuck structure of the batik chaos. All right and here we go these are the last animals I wanted to show off in the clutch. Again here we see the slack line uh, level two batik. Here is a slack line level three and this is the really true gem in the clutch. Uh, this is a slackline level three matrix. So slackline level three batik and matrix. And of course I neglect to mention Lily having an impact in pretty much all of these. So at any rate, we can see just how clean this stripe is. We can see just how um, ordered this back stripe is and it's just perfectly broken up. It's just, oh, absolutely gorgeous. We can really just kind of see the, the kind of combination of these two um, and what a difference Batik makes because, uh, well, Batik and uh, Matrix. And finally, we can kind of see the level two in comparison is just uh, not quite as ordered. Um, yeah. So I really kind of figured I would uh, just end the, the video 
um, put a close up on this animal and just uh, just kind of remark on the fact that this is one of the more fun blood python clutches I've ever hatched out, just in terms of the variability. It was really kind of fun to uh, kind of figure out what I think this stuff might actually be. And um, the, aver the variation in the offspring was just, uh, just so, so cool. Um, you know, and this animal was, was exactly what I was hoping it would be, which is to say a, a very different organization of the um, very heavily patterned uh, Batrix animals. Um, and I think it's really, really kind of cool. I'm really excited to kind of see uh, what kind of stuff could be done with this. This animal is possible het uh, T positive, and I think this would be just an absolute stunner animal to see in T positive. So um, I'm really excited the, the way this clutch turned out, and it's um, kind of rare where you kind of have uh, an idea of what you hope something is going to look like, um, and it ends up looking kind of exactly what you hoped it did. Hope, hoped it, I don't know exactly what you wanted it to look like.